Good morning, everybody. This is Aaron with TheRuggedStore.com. I got the FC55, the CF54 Toughbook, and I want to show you how they're the same and how they're different. So the 55 is replacing the CF54. It's the FC55 by Panasonic. It's both semi-rugged class, and this is the new semi-rugged laptop that's going to be rolling the 54 out. 54 is no longer orderable, so we're moving to the 55. I want to talk to you about some of the differences. So right off the bat, you have a lot of similarities. Uh, a lot of people love the CF54. It replaced the CF53, which is a lot thicker, a lot bigger, bulkier, and also not as rugged as the 54 or 55. And so the 55 pretty much took all the nice things about the 54 and heard a little bit of the complaints. Um, so rolling through some differences, we got the i5 and i7 8th generation processors in the 55, and that's replacing the 7th generation processors that were in the 54. Another major difference is the 54 was only um, certified to go up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It has uh, two different RAM slots in there, so a 16 gigabyte uh, chip and a 16 gigabyte chip for a total of 32. The 55 doubles that, so you can put a 32 chip and a 32 chip for 64 gigabytes of RAM. Another change is the C54 came by default with a 256 gigabyte SSD. You could upgrade that, but um, by default, the base models were 256. It doubled that again in the 55. The base models are 512 gigabyte SSDs. If you're talking about um, apples to apples, the display is roughly the same. There's an HD display, which is the uh, the 1366 by 768 and the FHD touch display, which is the 1920 by 1080 p and the uh, 1000 nit display. So, so there's the two different displays, the HD and the FHD. And that's the same as the 54. Pretty much the displays were, you know, a 14 inch display, easily accessible on the touch, basic apple, apples to apples. So there's not a whole lot of changes there. Um, another physical change that you'll see is the keyboard. You'll see, uh, if you're looking at the top-down camera, um, they took these four buttons over on the right of the CF54 keyboard, and they doubled them up into the arrow keys right underneath the shift and enter. And so they're pretty much buttons that you might not utilize as much, that they need a dedicated button. They just need the function and the arrow key. But what that does is it increases the size of the shift and enter on the right or dominant hand. Um, it might, or and I'm sorry, also the backspace. So it might not really look like a readily apparent difference, but if you're typing a lot, you're gonna feel it when you're constantly reaching for that backspace key or the enter or shift key, and you're hitting something else on the 54 because there was buttons that your hands were not uh, muscle memory kind of used to, that's kind of taken care of on the 55 and they stretched out those buttons that you're really looking for, shift, enter, backspace. Um, the emissive back at keyboard, another difference in between the 54 and the 55 is the 54 really only had one color that you could get. You know, there was a red backlit keyboard and a white backlit keyboard, and you were stuck with that. The 55 backlit keyboard is RGB, meaning you can set it to any color in the spectrum. And it holds two different uh, presets that you can set up, you know, maybe a daytime and a nighttime one, and you can toggle between those two. Um, there really is not a whole many more differences with the 55 keyboard except the addition of a airplane mode key in the function 10 key. Um, as far as other physical differences, we're looking at much better microphones. So as far as audio out, you're getting it a lot better on the 55 as opposed to the 54. The 55 is rated at 92, up to 92 decibels. The 54 never really launched what kind of um, decibel range they were looking for. But um, if our microphones can pick it up, I'll demonstrate that now. So with the 54 at volume 100, and then the 55 also at volume 100. So you can kind of hear those differences. I'll roll through that again just in case. So if you're in a patrol car or fire engine or any other um, place where there's ambient noise, that is going to be a big change for you is that you can hear the audio much better without kind of cranking your head next to the keyboard. I can't hear what that guy was saying in that voicemail or whatever that is. You have much uh, more readily uh, accessible speakers. And that's another change to the audio is the audio in. So the microphones for the CF54 had two microphones 
the 55 has four microphones, so for a quad ray, and that kind of complements another feature on the 55 is the infrared hello webcam. So you can, if you wanted to set up Windows 10 to pretty much turn on with your webcam, the 55 can do that with the infrared webcam, regardless if it's dark or light. And also if you're in a teleconference or recording, you know, a patrol report, etc., those microphones are gonna be much better at picking up your voice and getting rid of the ambient noise. And so with that infrared webcam, those microphones, 55 is going to give you a lot better audio and visual experience as a user. Speaking of visuals, rolling to that webcam, a lot of people are worried about privacy. Um, if you had a webcam on the 54, you were relegated to putting electric tape or a post-it note over it, just because the best way to make sure that someone doesn't use that camera to view you um, is a physical barrier. And the 55 has that included. It's just a little toggle slide, really easy to close or open. And Panasonic was taking um, the privacy concerns into effect with that. Um, as far as the durability ratings of the basic chassis of the 54 versus the 55, the 54 was IP51, so it's rated against dust uh, protection, but not dust tight, and pretty much drips of water. The uh, 55 is the same uh, solid protection, so it's dust protected, not dust tight. So the 5, IP5, but they upped it to IP53 or 53. So it pretty much can take uh, unpressurized water, it's going to be okay with it. So if you spill a massive cup of whatever soda, big gulp right next to your 55 splash on it, should be just fine. Again, this is not a fully rugged, you're not going to see fully rugged durability, but you're also not going to see fully rugged prices either. So the 55 has a better um, durability rating than the 54, but still don't want to kick it around a parking lot. Uh, as far as the biggest difference that we were talking about is, you know, obviously you could see a lot of the same uh, form factor. It pretty much is next to identical as far as weight and measurements. Um, but the modularity of the 55 is the biggest selling point for the 55, being able to upgrade it post factory. And we'll get into that. We'll unbox some modules or X packs as they're called by Panasonic in a future video. And we'll show you how to easily um, swap them in and out and how the user can make their 55 an even better uh, performance unit with desktop like performance, but higher than consumer grade durability. So that's the 55 versus the 54, just some basic differences. Um, really quick, we can just put the ports differences right over here, left and right. I'll give it a few seconds because we'd like to see the ports just kind of up against each other. But really what you'd expect as far as a modern computer, uh, HDMI, USB 3.0, etc., you're going to include those on the 55 and the 54. And if you don't have the ports you're looking for, that's where the X-Packs come into effect. So if you needed an older port like a VGA or a serial port, those X-Packs are going to be something that you can add as the user post-factory. So that's the 55 versus the 54. Look forward to seeing you in future videos. If you could like, share, and subscribe, it really helps us. And as always, head over to theruggestore.com. We're there to answer your questions, give you one of these units as far as a quote or a sale, and we look forward to seeing you there. Bye-bye.